Finish, honey? These damn candies. You don't have to take them. Are you kidding? I could lose my job over these candies. It doesn't sound so bad to me. I'd have you home more often. Come on, time to go. <laughs> Sorry, I can't go to the airport with you, honey. No point. I can handle it. You can handle anything. Say hi to Amsterdam for me. I'll miss you. You'll also miss your play if you don't get going. Five minutes, we'll be out of this mess and on the highway. Guaranteed. What do I tell you? I'm sorry. It's just that I have this meeting that I've got to make first thing in the morning, and I wasn't hey, sure... Hey, stupid! You okay, lady? Yeah, I think so. I know you got problems, but I gotta stay put till the cops get here. Oh, come on. It's nothing that serious. It's just a little scratch. Hey, hey. I'm moving in. I blow the insurance. The boss will have my ears. Well, can you at least call me another car or cab or something? I'm never gonna make it on time. All right. You realize you've made me miss my plane. We have been waiting here for at least an hour. It's a busy night, man. Planes come and go all the time. You'll get out another one. I can go now? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Creep didn't even look. Cut over like he owned the damn highway. Columbus set out for the Indies, when the Pilgrims set out for the New World, 
They had no way of knowing they'd reached their destination. Apparently, we're heading back to those days. Only now hijackers and terrorists play the roles once played by sea monsters and uncharted oceans. Whether it's the carefully plotted scheme of the politically disaffected or the crazed act of a twisted mind driven over the edge, either way, chance has re-entered our lives. A few seconds can make the difference between getting to the theater, the beach, the dentist, or becoming tomorrow's headlines. It's all in the timing. We got two, two dead? Yeah, the cabbie and his passenger. The limo driver and the cop from the radio car saw it. Freddy's taking the statement. They said that it was a bomb for sure, at least one in the trunk. OK, yeah, Freddy. Well, it's a little complicated. Uh, this gentleman picks up Mrs. Northwood at home. Uh, they get into an accident on the way to the airport, diddle around for about an hour filling out all the forms, get everything all straightened out. She grabs a taxi. Kaboom. Freddy. What do you think? Think a bomb like that would be big enough to blow up a plane? They had a car fly. Could have been me. Ten minutes earlier, five minutes earlier, it would have been me. Did you pick this lady up at home, you got an address for her. Never forget that address as long as I live. OK, good. We ain't get that down, huh? All right, you want to lift anywhere, uh, get one of the radio cars to do it for you, all right? OK, there's no thanks. staying around all right. here. Let's look up this lady's address. Freddie, I want you to drop by the cabbie's family, have a talk with them, and find out what you can about him, all right? Colby, drop by airport security. Let them know that somebody may have had a plan for one of their flights. Ah, oh, just what we need, huh? Another round of airplane bombing. That's Getting in bed. Don't Bad. go jumping in conclusions. Jumping, huh? Could have been meant for the cabbie. Oh, great. Somebody owed him money. This is a fine way to collect oh, it. Could have been her. Maybe she's having marriage problems. Oh, come on. Kevin, that thing was timed to go off 40,000 feet up in the air. I mean, who wants to get rid of his wife bad enough to kill 200 people? Tommy, try reading your history books. Look, I don't want to start a scare before we know our facts. Till then, let's just leave it a traffic accident, right? Scare? Good God, who the hell isn't scared? This place is bigger than my high school. I didn't know you went to high school. How the hell does someone stick a bomb on a plane and kill hundreds of people he doesn't even know? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Northwood? Yes? I'm Detective O'Brien. This is Detective Jambone. I'd like to talk with you for a minute, please. What's this about? Uh, do you mind if we step inside? Not at all. Come on in, gentlemen. What can I do for you? I'm afraid I have some very bad news for you, Mr. Northwood. Your wife has been killed. Oh, my God. Oh, my God, the plane. No, she was killed in a car on the way to the airport about an hour ago. An hour? Oh, thank God. It wasn't Lorraine. It couldn't be. I mean, her plane left hours ago. It was an accident on the highway. It appears there was a bomb in the car she was riding. A bomb. Oh. Just, uh, let me ask you a couple questions, Mr. Northwood. Just take a minute. Could you tell us where your wife was traveling to? Uh, uh Amsterdam on, on business. What kind of business is she in? Uh, she works for Simon Berlin. Berlin, the developer? Yes, she's his executive assistant. I don't understand. How could there be a bomb? Could anyone have had access to your wife's luggage, Mr. Norwood? Her luggage? Of course not. Why would you even think that? We have to check out all possibilities, sir. <sighs> a bomb. It must have been the car. Well, we're checking into that, too. OK, that's all for now, Mr. Northwood. I'm sorry about your wife. Uh, it'll just take me a minute to get dressed. Excuse me? Well, I'll have to go with you, won't I, to identify the body? I'm afraid we're going to have to rely on the medical records for that. Thanks. You buy all that grief? For some reason I shouldn't? Yeah. The champagne in that glass was still cold. You're gonna need 
need this. Lorraine was killed on the way to the airport. Hey, baby. Yeah. Hey, Brian's report came in on the taxi. The explosion originated in the trunk. They're pretty sure it was in Mrs. Northwood's suitcase. Well, I guess that rules out the driver, doesn't it? Well, I had him ruled out anyway. You had him ruled out anyway, did you? Yeah, I used to check him out, so I checked him out. The guy didn't have any money problems. The guy didn't have any loan sharks after him. Didn't have any mob connections. He even kept up the payments on his taxi. You want to see Thorough? This is Thorough. Yeah, well, that's the way we had it figured anyway. Well, did we find out anything interesting about the explosives, Cole? Jellic Knight. Same stuff used for blasting foundation. It can be found in any construction site in the city. Hey, wait a minute. Didn't that Northwood guy have some model of a building or something in his place? A brilliant observation. Yes, the deceased lady's husband is indeed an architect, but I suppose you had that figured out already. Freddy, we never dreamed of it. Why don't you tell us? May I? Yeah. All right. Now, at present, Mr. Northwood is the project architect on a very large construction site. Now, this puts him in charge of all manner of things, including blasting the foundation. Who do you have to be to finish a sentence around here? Me. <laughs> There's more? Well, of course there's more, because I also had a little chat with the Northwood family insurance agent, okay? Now, six months ago, both Mr. and Mrs. doubled their policies. Now, alive, she's making a good living, but dead, she's worth a half a million bucks. Buy a lot of champagne with that kind of money. Wait a minute. You guys know something I don't know. <clears throat> Everybody knows something you don't know, Freddie. We should pick him up and have a talk with this guy. He's not going anywhere. Man earns that kind of money. He's not going to kill his wife for an insurance policy. He might have a few more free evenings with champagne glass number two. Okay, Frank, let's go. <clears throat> We're going to go check out this lady's bar. Why don't you check out the husband, find out what he's doing and who he's doing it with? What could he be doing? What could he be doing? Freddy, baby, me and you got to have a long talk. Good of you to see us, Mr. Berlin. Now, how long had Mrs. Northwood been working for you? Seven years? No, no, eight. She'd been my executive assistant for five. I was so shocked when I heard. I still can't believe it. Now, her husband said she was going to Amsterdam on business? That's right. A shareholders meeting of a company I have an interest in. It's important for me to know what's happening firsthand. Was absolutely reliable. To tell the truth, I don't know what I'm going to do without her. Barbara, I told you to hold all my calls. Tell him I'll call back tomorrow. Now, what were we saying? Uh, can you think of any reason why someone would want to kill her? Kill her? Oh, good God, no. Why would you even ask a question like that? The car she was in exploded, Mr. Berlin. Bomb? Yes, a bomb. Well, I assume the gas tank, or uh, I don't know what. The newspapers didn't say anything about a bomb. I, I wish I could be more helpful. That's all right. Just a couple more. What can you tell us about her personal life? Well, not much. She was very businesslike. I am, too. Maybe she was a little... Yes? I don't quite know how to characterize it. She seemed a bit preoccupied the last few weeks. What do you mean, preoccupied? Well, she left work on occasion. Long lunches with her husband. They had scenes, I gather. She'd come back quite upset. But she never actually talked to you about what was bothering her. That wouldn't have been Lorraine, Detective O'Brien. I assume it was another woman.
is he coming here? I have to talk with you. Is anybody sorry? It's all right, I was careful. What's wrong? Nothing. Let me get you a drink. No, I don't want a drink. Tad, uh, I've been thinking about this. Uh, I'm going crazy. That's why I needed to see you. Oh. No, wait, go in the bedroom. I'll get ready. Police, would you like to speak to Mr. Northwood, please? I don't know what you mean. That's funny. The doorman buzzed him up here just a couple of no, minutes I'm ago. No, I'm sorry. You're mistaken. He's not here. All right, Gloria. I'll talk with him. I suppose you want me to come with you. We have some questions regarding your wife's death, Mr. Northwood. Thanks for giving us a few minutes, Mr. Gosford. This all Ted uh, Northwood's project? Yeah, pretty much. Take a lot of blasting to make the hole? Some. We try to keep it down to a minimum when we're working downtown. How much jelly night do you have now? Now none. We had bedrock a week or so ago. We had to use some then. There must have been lots of it around then. Enough to blow a hole five times this size. Listen, is there, uh... Is there something I ought to know about here? Have any of these explosives ever gone missing, Mr. Costrin? No. Every piece has to be signed out. In fact, at the end of this job, I can tell you where every stick was used. What about right now? No. We're in the middle of the job. Are you telling us that if something was missing, you... No, I'm telling you that in 25 years, I've never lost a stick. Now, now if you want me to go through all the paperwork, I'll go through all the paperwork. It wouldn't take me an hour or so. Is that important? Appreciate it. Thanks. Does Mr. Northwood, uh... Does he come around this site much? Yeah, you know, sometimes. He checks out supplies. Would he have had access to the Jellignite? He's got access to everything. Is there some reason he shouldn't have? Gentlemen, Miss Jeffers. Hello. I've advised my client of his rights. He's willing to give you his full cooperation, but please, Let's not waste time with any of your clever little interrogation tricks, okay, guys? I'll try not to waste your time, Counselor. Well, thank you. Now, Mr. Northwood, your wife carried an insurance policy of $500,000, right? Uh, that's correct. She was a very successful woman, and we have a large mortgage to think about. I don't think there's anything unusual about that. The policy was adjusted in the last couple of months, right? It was increased from 250,000 six months ago. So was mine. Did you know that the explosives that killed your wife were the same type used on your construction site? Well, they're used on almost all construction sites. You're familiar with explosives? No one has said that. I, I don't have anything to do with the explosives, gentlemen. But you could if you wanted to, right? Please, detective. We're not going to start asking him what could have happened, Look, are we? If you want to know about explosives, ask my project manager, Bill Coster. We already did. He's checking to see if anything's missing. Lieutenant. No one here seems to know anything. My client suffered a tragic loss. Does he have to be subject to this kind of questioning? Because something might be missing from someplace he might have been. Well, this is a homicide investigation, Counselor. I mean, we are trying to find out who killed Mrs. Northwood. I'm sure that's a subject your client must be interested in. Right. If you aren't enjoying this, Counselor, it's I'm sure... It's all right, sure Murray. I'll answer their questions. Fine. How long have you had a relationship with Gloria Danson, Mr. Northwood? About a year. Any talk of marriage? I am married. You were married. Ever thought of getting... Sit down. Ever thought of getting a divorce? What I talked about and didn't talk about doesn't seem to be very important now, does it, gentlemen? Well, I'm sure your attorney could tell you how important it could be, Mr. Northwood. No, we never talked about a divorce. Did your wife know about Miss Danson? Would it be too much to ask if one of you did the questioning? If they keep badgering All my right, client like fine, this... fine, Counselor. Detective O'Brien, did you tell her about Miss Danson? No, yes, she knew. All right, so you had words about yes, it. Yes, we talked about it. Look, I didn't kill my wife, gentlemen. I don't know what else I can tell you. That's up to you, Mr. Northwood. Maybe you will think of something. Thank you. You know where to reach us? Look, the cops were here. This is a police matter. I don't think I'm even supposed to be talking about it. Look, I know they were here. What did you tell them? 
I didn't tell them anything. I didn't have anything to tell them. They asked me if you were here. I said you were. What was I supposed to say, Ted? Well, what else did they ask you? Give me a break, Ted. I've been going over this stuff all night. And it still boils down to the same thing. There's two sticks missing. Oh, damn it, Bill. You know I had nothing to do with that. I don't know anything. And I keep telling you, I don't think I'm supposed to be talking to anybody about this. And I don't think you should be asking me all these questions. Look, you haven't said anything to the uh, police, have you, about the uh, missing sticks? First thing in the morning. Unless you want me to call him right now. Machines like that are usually kept locked? Around the street it would have been. There's no reason in here the gate's locked. If they just took what's left of Ted Northwood out of here, Mr. Coster, I think that's reason enough. Well, maybe Ted left the gate open when he came in. Uh, you didn't see anything or anybody? Just Ted. He was giving me a hard time about what I told those other two detectives to me. What kind of hard time? We got two sticks of gelegnite missing. Kind of let me know that he didn't want me telling anybody about it. And you told him? I told him I had a... Look, if, if he had anything to do with knocking off his wife... And who knocked him off, Mr. Costa? We'll be talking to you again. Thanks. Okay, that's good. That's good. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let me see it. Oh, that's my girl. That's my girl. Okay. Oh, yeah. I love that turn. saw Mr. Northwood, Miss Tanson. He called me after you people let him go. He was very upset. He was just on his way over to the construction site. Can I get you some water or something? No, I'm okay. It's just that Ted was the start of something new for me. I'm back out there with the sharks. We could do this somewhere else if you like. No, I, I wouldn't be comfortable anywhere else. I feel much better working, keeping my mind off things, you know? Wait, what did <laughs> Mr. Northwood and you talk about? What we were going to do. How frightened he was. Frightened? He told me you people thought he killed his wife. What else did he say? My God, he's dead. What does it matter? Someone killed him, Miss Danson. It matters. When you first... When you first told me... about Ted, I'm, I'm, the first thing I thought... I thought... He killed himself. That he killed Lorraine after all. He really loved me, though, you know. He really loved me. I'm sure I did. 
I'm not sure he killed his wife for you. Come on, sweetie. Are we doing this layout or aren't we? I'm, I'm sorry. Things are just such a mess. Thanks for your time. So cute. Yeah. You got a problem with all that? Yeah, I got a problem with all that. I think we're barking up the wrong tree. Don't give me trees, Kevin. We're not talking dog walking here. Trying to figure out who wanted to kill Lorraine Northwood. Maybe nobody wanted to kill her. Well, they got a funny way of showing them. If it hadn't been for the accident with the limo, the bomb would have gone off over the ocean. The target could be anybody on the plane. We're checking out the passenger lists. What are we looking for? Someone, someone else wanted to get? There were over 200 people on that plane. They could have over 800 enemies out there. 800 enemies with access to Lorraine Northwood's luggage? Is that uh, first class or coach? Well, actually, anyone on the plane. Uh, whom in particular are you looking for? Well, we were uh, kind of hoping you could help us with that. VIPs, anyone with special security requirements. Now, isn't there some way you can get that out of this? Would they be window or aisle? <laughs> Anybody ever tell you you got a great sense of humor? Listen, where they're sitting isn't important. All we want is a bunch of names that we can check out. Anyone that someone might have been interested in bombing. You mean on one of our flights? Listen, can you just give us the passenger list and we'll take it from there? Of course. Why don't you just say so? I thought I did. She's doing just fine. Here it is. Everyone on the flight. I hope you'll find it helpful. Will that be all, officers? Yes, uh, that's what all we can handle for one night. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You know, one problem women have when they date cops, a good detective can always tell what they're thinking, exactly what the next move is going to be. Yeah, and that's why the women you go out with don't move, huh? Come on, man, you can't handle that even on your best day. What do you mean I can't handle it? How's it going? Thank God, an interruption. What was that? Well, huh? Well, what do I owe this honor, this pleasure, this duo? Just tying up a few loose ends. What can you tell us about Lorraine Northwood's boss? Simon Berlin? Mm -hmm. What I read in the papers. You write the papers, Tommy. He's kind of hoping you give us an inside track. Well, that's a little off my beat. I mean, there are rumors. There's always rumors about guys like that. Guys like what? The rich, the rich. You know, they have problems, too. Haven't you ever noticed? Yeah, what kind of problems? Well, I don't know. The women, money, uh, same as us. They just go broke at a higher level, that's all. How broke is Mr. Berlin? That gives me the impression you want me to do a little digging here. I don't want to trouble you, Tom. Really? Uh, give me a couple hours and see what I can come up with. Good night, Irene. You turned off my machine. Oh, I thought you were leaving. But that was my story in there, my whole story. Well, that's probably not too good anyway. Well, it wasn't. But if you leave it in the computer a little while longer, it gets better. Is that how you do it? We promise not to tell. That's how we all do it. Want me a drink? Scotch, no ice, or don't you remember? Oh, I remember. The message on my machine said uh, you want to talk. What is it we have to talk about? The future. Yours or mine, my dear? Well, they don't have to be two different things, Simon. And that's what you wanted to talk about? I thought I'd find you... In mourning? Well, a little bit more upset, shall we say. That's not fair, Simon. I love Ted. I'm sure. It was obvious the moment I introduced the two of you. Perhaps that was my mistake. No. No, I think your mistake was killing him. <sighs> Why would I kill Ted Northwood? Because 
he would have found out you put a bomb in his wife's luggage? You're a foolish girl, Gloria. Lorraine was my most trusted employee. I've forgotten what a wonderful view you have out here. You can't get away from this, Simon. Ted told me about that little gift-wrapped box of chocolates for your mother. Ah, yes, the chocolates. I told the police about them. I hope that wasn't your whole card, my dear. They didn't seem to be too interested. Ted left a letter with me. It was supposed to go to the police if anything happened to him. That'd be pointless now, though, wouldn't it? You're not very convincing as the villainous, Gloria. I liked you so much better when you played the ingenue. Oh, well, it's not out of the question. I didn't imagine it would be. We're two of a kind, aren't we? What is it you want? Ted took care of me. He took very good care of me. And now there's no one to take care of you. Is that what's worrying you? It was. I could buy and sell a dozen Ted Northwoods. I could take much better care of a woman if I found the right kind of woman. I imagine you could. A woman with imagination, ambition. I detest boring women. We're not talking about a letter that doesn't exist, are we, Gloria? No, we're not. What are we talking about then, Gloria? Tell me. I want to hear you say it. Me? Strange how two people can start off loving each other. In the end, one blows the other one to pieces. Well, in this case, I don't think that's quite it. What, you mean he didn't kill his wife? Somebody killed him tonight. What? It's probably going to turn out to be something grubby and mundane. Is there any romance left to anything anymore? Oh, what, do you think killing your wife is romantic? Well, if there's another woman involved, it could be very, very... Well, I didn't know you felt that way, baby. Anyone you want me to bump off? <laughs> it wouldn't work for us, you see, because we're not married. We're not married. Slipped my mind. Besides, you wouldn't knock anyone off in my account anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, I might kill you on account of someone else. Oh, right. Someone younger, prettier, richer. Well, you wouldn't get away with it because I have friends in the police department. Uh-huh. Well, I don't need younger, and they don't make prettier. Uh-huh. Well, that leaves richer. We'll make do. Yeah? You smell pretty good tonight. Uh-huh. What is it? It's called provoke. No, it works. <laughs> good. <laughs> What are we doing here? This stuff doesn't wear out, does it? There's lots more where it came from. Uh huh. It uh, might be for you. Yeah. Yeah, it might be my sugar daddy. O'Brien? Hi. Gloria. Gloria. Tenth floor. Any witnesses? Doorman hurt her head. What a shame. 
And what's this? There's glass all over the place. You're sipping on a little whiskey. What? What are you thinking? Somebody wanted to make it look like a suicide? I don't know. I don't know. Come on, there's nothing we can do. Let's get out of here. to do to get some decent darts around here. After last night, you're lucky to get them. What happened last night? What's it to you? Hey, hi, fellas. How's it going? Hi, hey. Tommy. Hey, that was some tip you gave me on that assignment in Berlin. Yeah, glad I could be of some help. What did you do with them? Well, I got... One milk straight up? Uh, yeah, cool. You guys are subject for a book, none of which anybody would print. So what happened last night? Where'd you get the darts? Everybody I talked about a Simon Berlin story. Nobody wanted to be quoted, but everybody's saying the same thing. Which is? Well, have you ever heard of smoke and mirrors? That's Simon Berlin. You reach out to touch him, nothing there. There's got to be something there. Listen, a couple of years ago, this guy was worth $100 million. Today, probably uh, playing with the stock markets. <laughs> Look, seriously, this is a heck of a story. The father makes a fortune in oil, land, and timber. Bitter divorce makes the papers for little Simon's just a mere tie. Right? His mother. She runs away with a European count. His father shoots himself and leaves everything to some uh, uh, weird charity. And then he leaves a long letter explaining the virtues of self-reliance. Nothing wrong with the virtues of self-reliance? Oh, no. Oh, no, it's great stuff if you can handle it. But uh, Simon, well, his case was, uh, he had a whole legend that he had to live up to. So, little Simon comes out of nowhere ten years later and hits the financial world like a linebacker. I mean, the guy's an incredible gambler. He draws the inside straights and makes them every time. I win. Yeah. Thanks. What are you talking about, gambling or football? We're not talking football again, are we? No, no, we're talking money. Oh, this is off the record, you know. Oh, well, what am I going to do with it, Tom? Put it on my menus? <laughs> All right. For eight years, this guy's money's been trying to figure out how to make more money. All of a sudden, the magic stops. There's accountants in half a dozen countries trying to figure out where the money went. What happened and how much is left? Doesn't seem to have cramped his style. Well, it never does with these guys. Oh, there's a fellow named Henry Wax. Somebody ought to talk to him. All right, I'll add his name to the list. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Henry Wax? He is on the list. What are you talking about? Remember that passenger list that uh, Freddie and Colby got from the airline? Yeah, yeah. I was helping him run down some names, and there was this character named Wax on it. It was right at the bottom of the list. And the first name is Henry. All right, who the hell was he? I don't know, we knocked off before we got to the W's. Who he is, gentlemen, is Simon Berlin's partner. Or he was, anyway. Apparently, the both of them had this incredible blowout. It seems that Mr. Berlin was siphoning funds from their joint company accounts, putting it into his personal offshore holding company. So this lady who was about to get on the airplane knew something about these shady dealings? And that's why he killed her? You heard it here first. No, no, no. Sorry, Nikki, but this Lorraine Northwood, she was a good soldier. And why would he put explosives in her luggage? Because Henry Wax was trying to get an injunction to examine Berlin's books in Amsterdam. And she was on the same plane as he was. That is, if she got on that plane. Right. Finally, it's beginning to make a little sense. I was wondering why I like this guy here. Why don't you give him some cookies with his milk on me? Practice, practice. Makes perfect. Got any fig newtons? Yes? Mr. Berlin is gone for the day. May I help you? Police. Where is he? Home, I believe. Have Colby and Carson check that out. Where can I find Henry Wax? In about an hour at the airport. He's returning from Amsterdam today. Hello? Forget it, we'll call from the car. Uh, goodbye. Here's your card for you. If Berlin comes back here, you call the number on that card as soon as you see him. Ask for Lieutenant Hogan. You understand that, lady?
catch up with Berlin at his house, bring him in, Cole, and be real careful. 10-4, Kevin. There's also a Henry Wax arriving at the airport from Amsterdam. I want airport security to pick him up as soon as he gets off that plane. That's a permit. Go around back. Anything? Nothing, but I could live in the pool house. Let's go. Are you an embarrassment? Get this, Kevin. Airport security advises this Henry Wex character already playing the clear customs. They're going to try and catch up with him if he's still in the airport. Don't hold your breath. Run a vehicle check on a Simon Berlin. Find out what he drives. Notify airport security to keep on the lookout for it. Then you guys get your butts out there. You guys get crazier by the minute. I'll beat you there. That'll be the day. doing here, Simon? We have to talk, Henry. I don't think you should talk without seeing an attorney, Simon. I had no idea you were capable of such actions. Don't get excited, Henry. We don't want to attract attention. You should have thought of all of that before you started all this. You going completely crazy? I think the more appropriate word would be desperate. I'm running kind of low on options right now, Henry. Just keep moving and keep quiet. Stolen everything. What more do you want? Stay out of jail. We'll, we'll talk about that later. Passenger Henry Wax. Please call information. Good man. Anyone tries to claim this car, you hang on to them, huh? Thanks. Who the hell would be crazy enough to try anything in here? Man looking at three homicides. I don't think the time to them and the papers wax is carrying. Date 10. All right. Must have nine lives, Henry. Hold it, Berlin. Brian, so things are mistake. Berlin, you're gonna need a hell of a lawyer to get you out of this one. Oh, don't you worry about that, O'Brien. I've got the best. I'm thinking of representing myself. Come on, Frank. Let's go. Scott Fitzgerald said the rich were different from the rest of us. Hemingway said it was only because they had more money. I'm just a plain old newspaper man, but my vote goes to Fitzgerald. The difference is what wealth and power do to a man's soul. Or maybe it's not wealth and power, but the need for them. 
the need that reduces everything and everyone along the way to assets and liabilities. You add them, subtract them, liquidate them if you have to. And when you push that philosophy as far as Simon Berlin did, in the end, you're living in a world with no people. You know, O'Brien, I like the way you operate. Your partner, too. Berlin, we're flattered. You guys ever thinking about going into the private sector? <laughs> I could use a couple of men like you. Sure. That's something to think about, young man. I'll think it over. Give me a call when you get out. 